Welcome to the video on basic subtraction. Let's do a little bit of review of basic addition first. If I said 4 plus 3, what did this mean? 4 plus 3. What did that equal? Well, there were a couple of ways we could have viewed this. We could have said I had 4 of something. Let's say I had 4 circles, or I don't know, I had 4 lemons for, for breakfast. So. One, two, three, four lemons for breakfast. And let's say I had another three lemons for lunch. One, two, three. And so you could view four plus three as how many total lemons did I have? I'm adding three to four. So how many total did I have? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I had a total of seven lemons. Another way we could have view that is we could have drawn our number line. And I'll draw it in yellow because we're, no, that's not wide enough. I'll draw it in yellow because we're talking about lemons. So let's say that's our number line. And if I start at the number, let me draw all of the numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven. So you could view, you could think about this as, as saying, well, we're on the number line. We start at the number four, right? That's this number four, and we're adding three to it. So we'll increase along the number line by three. So we'll go one, two, three, and you end up at seven. So you could say, if I have four and I get three more, I get seven. Or if I increase four by three, I also get seven. So what's subtraction now? Because that's what this video is about. I shouldn't waste all of our time talking about addition. So let's take the example of 4 minus 3. What is that equal to? Let me switch colors just to keep things interesting. So what is 4 minus 3 equal to? Subtraction, or minus, is the opposite of addition. So in addition, you're, you're doing something more. You're adding. I don't want to use the word adding to define addition, but that's what you're doing. I had four lemons, and then I had three more. In subtraction, you're taking away. So this example, if I started with four lemons, let's say I had four lemons on a plate, if I'm subtracting three, if I'm saying minus three, instead of adding these three here and getting seven, I'm going to take three away. So maybe I'm eating them, or maybe I'm giving them to you for in exchange for watching these videos. So to take away 3 from this 4, let's say this one goes away, this one goes away, and this one goes away. How many lemons would we have left? Well, this is the only one that I haven't crossed out. So we would have one lemon left. One lemon left, and this would be the lemon that's left. Didn't have to be that one. I could have crossed out any of the 3. Another way to view that, let's draw the same lemon colored number line. Let's say that this is the number line right here. And I'll draw all the same numbers. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Of course, the number line keeps going. There's no largest number. You can imagine any any number that you can think of, I can think of one higher than that. So there is no largest number, so that's why we draw that arrow there. I could never draw the entire number line. But anyway, back to subtraction. So we're starting at four lemons, right? When we added three plus three, we went to the right four spaces on the number line. And that's because the right is increasing value. So we went from four to five, that was one more. Five to six was two more, and seven was three more. Now we're taking away from 4. So what do we do? What, what would you think we do? Well, since we're taking away, we're going to decrease the total number of lemons we have, right? So we take away 1, we get to 3, take away 2, get to 2, take away 3. We took away 3, right? So we'll go back 1, 2, 3 along the number line, and we'll end up at 1. And that's this one right here. So just to review. Addition is you're doing more of something. Subtraction is you are taking away. If you think about it on the number line, 
Addition is increasing along the number line by that amount. So in this case, we increased along the number line by 3. And so we went from 4 to 7. In the subtraction case, we decrease back on the number line. So we decrease by the amount that you're subtracting. So in this case, we decreased by 3. So we went back 1, 2, 3, and we had 1. And the other way to view it, if I have 4 or something, if I give 3 away, or if I ate 3 of them, or if I, I don't know what I did to 3 of them, if I lost 3 of them, I would have 1 left. Now let me show you some interesting things about subtraction. So we know that 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Let me show you something else that's interesting. What is 4 minus 1? Well, we could, we, could do, we could use either example. Let's do the lemon example. If I had, let's do apples now. I'm bored of the lemons. Let's say I had 1, one 2, 3, 4. I have a new pen. Sometimes it doesn't draw right. Let's say I had four apples, right? This is the example we're dealing with. And I were to eat one of them. So one of them were to go away. How many apples would I have left? Well, three. One, two, three. So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. And if we did it on the number line, if we started at 4, and we subtracted 1, we took 1 away, so we're going to become 1 smaller. We go back 1, we get 3. Either way works. But isn't this interesting? 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, and 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Uh, that, that you might say, well, is, is this, you know, did I pick the numbers just so it worked? Well, it turns out that it's always true. Four, if some, well, I don't want to get too technical, but this is we're already touching on on stuff, something that you'll learn later on, maybe in algebra one day. But actually, I don't want to go into that right now. So, where does this come from? Well, this is also based on the fact that three plus one. I didn't want to confuse you, so I apologize if I did. But I'll show you another interesting thing. What is 3 plus 1? 3 plus 1 is equal to what? Well, that's easy. You know that from basic addition. You can start on the number line at 3 and add 1 to it. And where do you end up? You end up at 4. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. Or you could have started at 1 on the number line and added 3. 1, 2, 3. And you would have also ended up at 4, right? So. We also know that you could have switched this either way. Both of those are equal to 4. What do you see here? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of things I've written here, and, and they all kind of relate to each other. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Essentially, 4 minus 1 and getting 3 is the exact same. You're, you're saying the same thing as 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. right? This statement says, if I add 1 to 3, I get 4. This is saying, if I take away 1 from 4, I get 3. So if I start at 4 and move back, I get 3. This is saying, if I start at 3 and I move up 1, I get 4. Hopefully, that gives you a little bit of intuition about what subtraction is. In the next video, I'll just do as many basic subtraction problems I can do in 10 minutes. And, and then you'll be ready to do the exercises. See you soon. Let's review a little bit about what we know so far about subtraction. So if I say 5 minus 3, what does that mean? Well, there's a couple of ways to think about it. I could have 5, let's say I had 5, five berries. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I could have 5 berries. And when I say minus 3, or subtracting 3 from it, I can view that as saying, I'm going to take away 3 of these berries. So if I take away that berry, that berry, and that berry, so I've took away 1, 2, 3 berries, how many berries do I have left? Well, the only berries I have left are right here, 1, 2. So I have 2 berries left, just like that. Now the other way. The other way that I could visualize or think about 5 minus 3, I'll do it over here, 5 minus 3, is to think about what the difference between 5 and 3 is. So let me do this. So let's say I have 5 berries. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's say that you have 3 berries. Yours is a slightly different color. You have 
three berries. So another way to think about 5 minus 3 is, how many more berries do I have than you have? And if you look right here, well, you see, this berry is another. You have also one berry there. We both have one berry there. We both have one berry there. But I've got one, two berries that you don't have. So once again, I have two more berries than you have. Now we can also think of this from the number line point of view. The number line point of view. So let me draw a number line. Uh, just like that. It's my number line. We've learned on the addition videos. We can keep going off forever. And actually, we could even go to the left of 0 and go into negative numbers, which we'll see in future videos. But I'll start at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll just go, I'll go up to 7. So if we do 5 minus 3, if we view 3 as being taken away from 5, 5 minus 3 means start at 5. If I did 5 plus 3, I would, go, I would jump three spots to the right, because that's increasing the number of things I have. But if, since I'm subtracting 3, I want to decrease by 3. So I decrease by 1, 2, 3. And I get 2, I get to 2, just like that. Now, if we visualize it from this point of view, let me draw another line, number line. And I wanted to show you, I mean, this is, I'm taking away 3. And here I'm saying, how many more is 5 than 3, even though they're the exact same answer, but there are two different ways to think about it. Let me draw a number line here again. Let me draw the same number line. I'll draw the same number line. I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if I were to plot where 5 is on this number line, so this is the 5 right there. I'll put a little pink square around it. 5 is right there. Now 3, let me do 3 in this yellow color. 3 is right here on the number line. So in this, this way of thinking about 5 minus 3, you're saying, how far, what is the difference? Let me write that down. Here we're saying, what is the difference? The difference between 5 and 3. Between 5 and 3. And to figure out the difference, you actually have to say, how much do you have to add to 3 to get to 5? So the difference here, how different is 5 than 3? Well, you have to go up 1 and then up 2 to get to 5. So the difference between 5, which is all the way over here, and 3, which is just that far, is the difference between 5 and 3 is 2, just like that. That right there is 2. Let me draw that in another box. So that's 2 right here. And I want to make these, 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 this difference between subtraction and difference, I want to make it at least reasonably clear to you, because this is, this, there, these are two different ways of viewing subtraction. But it ends up being the exact same operation. You're going to get the same answer, regardless of which way you think about it. Now, I could view, let me do different numbers now. Let me do 7 minus 4. So I could view this as, maybe I have a 7 foot long piece of wood. Maybe I have a 7 foot long piece of wood. It's 7 feet long. Let me put a, if I put a ruler up against it, I would have that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have a 7 foot long piece of wood. And then I could saw off 4 of those feet. So if I were to saw off 4 of these feet, so I saw off 1, 2, 3, 4, how much wood do I have left? So all of this stuff right here, I'm eliminating. I'm sawing it off. I'm sawing it off of the wood. Maybe I should do that in a darker color to show that I'm, that, to show that I'm sawing it off. So all of this stuff is going to disappear. I'm grinding it away. I'm sawing that off. So I'm just left with, after I saw off the 4 inches or feet or whatever of the wood, I'm left with 1, one 2, 3 inches of wood. So this is 3. So 7 minus 4 is equal to is equal to 3. This is viewing subtraction as literally taking away. I sawed off the wood. So I took away wood. Now, I could think of it in a, in a slightly different but uh, a slightly different way of thinking about it but give you the exact same answer. We could say 7 minus 4. So once again, I could have the 7 inch long piece of wood right like that. So if I put a ruler here, that's 1 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven. So once again, a seven inch long piece of wood. And now instead of taking four away of it, I'm comparing it, so this that's a seven, I'm comparing it to a four inch long piece of wood. So I have another four inch long piece of wood right there. That's my four inch long piece of wood. That's seven, this is four. You could view seven minus four as taking four inches away from the long piece of wood, or you could view seven minus four as the difference between the four inch piece of wood and the seven inch piece of wood. So in this case, what's the difference? To go from the four inch piece of wood to the seven inch piece of wood, I would have to grow by three inches, or I would have to add, or I would have to add a three inch piece of wood somehow, or the wood would somehow have to grow by three inches in order to become seven inches. So these are two completely equivalent ways to view subtraction. That's all a little bit of review from the last video. Now what I also want to do in this video is start tackling slightly larger problems, but it, you'll see that it really the number line applies just equally as well as to, to kind of the simpler problems that we've done before. So let's do, let's do 17 minus 9. So just like everything else, there's two ways we could have done it. You know, the, the more slow way is you could draw 17 objects. Let's say I have 17 chips. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then I'm going to take away nine of them. So I'm going to take away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many am I left with? I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 17 minus 9 is equal to 8. But that took a long time. And you can imagine if this number was a lot bigger, it would have taken me forever to draw all of these circles and then scratch out things. And it would have wasted paper and, and time. And well, we have other things to do. So another way you could do it, and it, uh, maybe this would be easier for you to visualize, is to draw the number line. You always don't have to start at 0. So if we draw the number line, if we say, let's say this, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. You could imagine I could keep going to the left all the way to 0. But I start at 17. I could start at 17 and take away 9 from it. So I go 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And once again, we are left at 8. Now, this was, at least in my head, a little bit cleaner and faster than this one. But in either case, you don't want to do this every time you have to subtract 9 from 17 or want to find the difference between 17 and 9 and, and to realize that's 8. So this is something that eventually you'll want to internalize. You'll, you'll want to know by heart that, oh, 17 minus 9? I know, that is 8. And by the way, 17 minus 8. What's 17 minus 8? Well, that is 9. And now why does all of this make sense? Because 8, 8 plus 9 is equal to 17. So 17 minus 9 is 8. 17 minus 9 is 8. Or 17 minus 8 is 9. When I say 17 minus 8, I'm essentially saying that is equal to some number that if I were to add to 8, will equal 17. Well, that's 9. And when I say 17 minus 9, that's saying there's some number that if I were to add it to 9, I'll get 17. Well, that's 8. So all of these, all of these statements are kind of saying the same thing, that 8 plus 9 are 17. Or the difference between 17 and 9 is 8. Or the difference between 17 and 8 is 9. Hopefully. Hopefully, I'm not confusing you. So for most of these, for most of these uh, subtraction problems where the answer is a one-digit answer, you you should you should eventually have them memorized. But in your head, it's good to be me uh, imagining this number line. Let's do a couple more of these, and then once we get once we have these memorized, or at least be able to do a number line if we don't if we forget, uh, I'll show you how to do any subtraction problem for arbitrarily for super large numbers. So let's say that. Let's say we're going to do 13 minus 5. So once again, I'm not going to do the whole circles or the berries this time. I'm just going to draw the number line. Just draw the number line like that. And let's start at, no, it says 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And you just keep going 
a lower and lower. You can go to 0, or you could even go past 0. We'll talk about that in the future. But we start at 13. We're starting at 13. 13. And we're going to take 5 away from it. So this is the subtraction view of subtraction. We're taking away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we land at 8. So 13 minus 5, we do this in a new color. 13 minus 5 is equal to 8. Now another way we could have thought about that, I plotted where 13 is. I can plot where 5 is. I could say, look, this is 5. 5 is right here on my number line. What do I have to add to 5 to get to 13? So let's see, I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have to add 8 to 5 to get to 13. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. So that tells me that 13 minus 5 is equal to 8. This also tells me that 13 minus 8 is equal to 5. These are all, all of these are in, on some level telling me the exact same thing. That the difference between 13 and 5 is 8. The difference between 13 and 8 is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. So hopefully you have the hang of that. And if you haven't done so already, it, it, it'll be good to practice all of these, uh, You know, take, taking a, a teen number and then subtracting uh, any of the one digit numbers from those teen numbers. That's in general very, very good practice for you. I think we're just about ready to learn how to subtract pretty much any number from any other number. So let's just review a little bit of what we know already. So if I were to ask you what 16 minus 4 is. I could draw 16 apples and then take away 4 of the apples. Or I could actually draw a number line. And actually, let me do it here just to start off the video to get warmed up. I could draw the number line. Maybe that's 16. Maybe that's 17. It's 15, 14, 13, 12. Let me go down all the way to 11. I could keep going, but I've run out of space. Now, if I don't know in my head what 16 minus 4 is, and it's a pretty good one to eventually know in your head, you could start in your number line, or you could imagine the number line in your brain. And you could go down by 4. 16 minus 1 is 15. Minus 2 is 14. Minus 3 is 13. Minus 4 is 12. And you would have the answer. 16 minus 4 is 12. Now, an even easier way to do this problem. An even easier way to do this problem is just to focus on the places of the digits. Now let me be clear what I mean when I say that. Let me rewrite it. 16 minus 4. And I've gone over this a little bit in the addition videos. This is the ones place. The ones place. The 6 is in the ones place. The 4 is in the ones place. The 1 right here, this right here, or if, I, if there was something down here, this column, that is the tens place. That's the tens place. Now what do we mean by that? Well, 16, 16 is the same thing as 10 plus 6. So when we write it, this 1 literally means 1 10. If you thought of, think of it in money, it means one $10 bill. If I had a 2 there, if I had 26, that means two $10 bills. Two $10 bills would mean $20. So that's two $10 bills, and then six $1 bills. You can see this is the $1 bill place. That's the $10 bill place. If I had 355, let me do it, 357, you could view this as three $100 bills, five $10 bills, and seven $1 bills. And that's why this is called the hundreds. That's the hundreds place. This is the tens place. And this is the ones place. And we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper into this as we explore uh, borrowing and regrouping more in this video and in others. But I wanted to label these places because what I want to show you is you don't even have to think about 16 minus 4. You can actually just look at just the ones place and think about 6 minus 4. And say 6 minus 4, well, you could draw a number line, or you could even use your fingers if you have to. But you probably have that memorized. You could probably visualize it in your head. 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. And then 1, then we go to the tens place. 1 minus nothing. There's nothing over here. So 1 minus nothing is 1. And you get 12. Same answer. We're able to simplify a little bit. Let's try another problem like that. If I were to ask you what 78 minus 30 minus 37 is. So we start off in the ones place. And we say 8 
minus 7. That's 8 1s minus 7 1s, or just 8 minus 7. 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. Then we go to the tens place. 7 minus 3. Now remember, this is 7 tens, or 7 $10 bills, minus 3 $10 bills. If I had 7 $10 bills, and I give away 3 of those $10 bills, then I'll have 4 $10 bills. Or 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. And just like that, we were able to figure out that 78 minus 37 is 41. And you know, this would have been really hard to do. It would have taken you forever to draw 78 apples and to cross out 37 of them. Or to draw a number line all the way up to 78 and then go back 37 spaces. That would have given you the answer, but it would have taken you forever to solve it that way. And just by focusing on just each column, you're able to get the right answer. Well, you might say, hey, Sal, but what happens if I can't? If, if, well, let me give you an example where this will start to become difficult doing it this way. I'll do one more example like this. So let's say I had, let's say I had 95 minus 31. Just like that, 5 minus 1 is 4. 9 minus 3 is 6. 95 minus 31 is 64. You're probably saying, Sal, subtraction is easy. I can just look at each place, the ones place, and subtract, tens place, and subtract. But I'm about to show you that it's not always at least that easy. But with a little bit of practice, hopefully you'll realize that it's also not too bad. Let me. So what if I were to ask you what 22 minus 17 is? 22 minus 17. Now once again, I could draw 22 oranges or apples and take away 17 of them, and you could count what's left, and you would get the right answer. But that would take you forever. Is there any way I could do that uh, maybe just on the paper right here? Now, you might, your, your reaction might be, let me just do what you just did before. But if you look here, if I try to subtract 7 from 2, I, if I have two things, at least for, for the mathematics that we know right now, I can't give away 7. I only have 2 to give away. This would give me something smaller than 0, which we don't know about. It, that's a negative number. I can't, I, As far as we know right now, we can't subtract 7 from 2. But we know that 17 is smaller than 22. So what can we do here to, to actually do this subtraction problem? So what we do here is, and you know, you might call it borrowing. You might call it regrouping. This 2 right here, this 22 is the same thing as 20 plus 2. That's the 22 right there. It's 20 plus 2. The 17 is 10 plus 7. That's just another way to write 17. Now, we have a 2 here. We want something larger than a 7 to subtract from. So what we can do is we can borrow from this 2 or from this 20. They're the same thing. This, let me do that in another color. This 2 right here is the same thing as that 20. It's just another way of a 2 in the tens place means two $10 bills. Two $10 bills is the same thing as $20. That's what that 2 represents. So if I want to make this 2 into something larger, why don't I take a $10 bill from here? If I take a $10 bill from here and I turn it into ones, I go to the cash cashier and say, give me a bunch of ones. So if I take a $10 bill from here, then I'll, this will become $10. And then I cash into a bunch of ones and put it here. So then this will become $12. If we look over here, what looks like I did is I took a 1 from this 2. So this 2 will now become a 1. right? It went from two tens to one ten. It became just one $10 bill. And then I gave that 1 to this 2. This 2 then becomes a 12. And now we can actually subtract 12 minus 7 is 5. 12 minus 7, I'm just doing the same problem, just written slightly different on this right-hand side, is also 5. And then we have 1 minus 1 is a 0. I could write this as 0, 5, but that's just the same thing as 5. And here I'd have 10 minus 10. Well, 10 minus 10 is just 0, so it's just 0, 5. So 22 minus 17 is 5. Let's, ex let's try to extend this to an even harder problem. And hopefully you'll get the hang of how this borrowing or regrouping, depending on how you want to view it, actually works. So let's say that we have 703 minus 67. 
So if I try the technique that we learned earlier in this video, I immediately hit a roadblock. I say 3 minus 7. Well, that, gee, that's, you know, if I have three apples, I can't take away 7 from there. So I'm, I'm, I'm at an impasse. I don't know what to do next. And you say, well, maybe I can borrow. But I, go, I look to the left, I, well, gee, there's a 0 there. How can I borrow from a 0? And then, well, there's a 7 there, but then how do I borrow from the 7 and all of that? And the best way to think about it, and the more practice you do, the better. Remember, this 703 is 700. $700 bills plus zero $10 bills plus three $1 bills. And 67 is six $10 bills, or $60, plus seven. So if we can't borrow from here, because I have no $10 bills, what we want to do is break, is break one of the $100 bills. So what I do is I take a $100 bill from here. So now I'm left with $600. So this 7 becomes a 6, right? It's a 6 in the hundreds place. It represents 600s, six, six $100 bills. So then I, remember, I took out a $100 bill. And now what I can do is I can split that $100 bill. I can give $10 to this guy, or sorry, I can give $90 to this guy right here. And then I can give $1 to this guy, sorry, uh, I can give 99, sorry, I can give uh, $90 to this guy, and then I can give $10 to that guy right there. I have $100 to work with, right? So what happens? If I do that, if I take that $100 bill that I took out from here, went to the cash register, I got nine tens or $90. So now I have nine tens here. And then I have 10 ones here. So I add 10 plus 3, it becomes. 13. And just like that, all my numbers in each column, if I were to draw columns like this, divide them up, everything on top is bigger than everything on the bottom. So now I can subtract. So 13 minus 7 is 6. 9 minus 3, I'm sorry, 9 minus 6 is 3. 6 minus nothing is 6. So 703 minus 67 is 636. Now you might be saying, OK, Sal, I kind of get what you did. You took 100 from here. You put 90 here, so that became a 9. You gave 10 here. But how did you know to do that? Or what's a more systematic way of doing it? You know, This kind of is the conceptual way, which is, in my mind, the most important way to understand it. But let's, let me show you kind of a mechanical way to do that. So let's say we have 700. I'll do the same problem over again. 703 minus 67. I look at all of the numbers on the top, and I say, are they all larger than the numbers on the bottom? I say, well, 3, well, no, 7 is larger than 3. That's not good. 6 is larger than 0. That's not good. So I need to do something. So what I do is I start with this 3 right here. And I say, well, can I borrow from this number to the left? And I look to the number to the left, and I cannot borrow from 0. So then I look to the two numbers to the left and say, can I borrow from 70? And I say, well, gee, I can definitely borrow from 70. We know this is actually 700. So if I borrow from 70, what happens? If I borrow 110 from 70, 70 becomes 70 becomes 69, right? If I borrow 1 from 70, I, it becomes 69. And I take that 1, and I, it's essentially a 10, right? So that 10 plus 3 is now 13. And now these are my columns. Just just like that. And you have 13 minus 7 is 6, 9 minus 6 is 3, and then 6 right down here. Now, another way, another way you can think about it, I'll do the exact same problem. 703 minus 67. You could start at the left. You could say, look, 7 is, well, it's larger than what's below it. Nothing is below it, so I'm cool there. And then you go one right to the right of it, and you say, well, 0, well, 0 is not bigger than what's below it. It's not bigger than the 6 below it. So I'm going to need to borrow. So what I can do is I can borrow 1 from the 7. I'm essentially borrowing 100, right? So if I borrow, this is 700. Let me make it 600. Now if I take 100 away and I turn it into 10s, that's 10 tens. It looks like we took a 1 away and we just put the 1 in front of the 0, but we essentially added 10 tens to it. But if it helps your mind, we took a 1 away from this, put it right in front of the 0 just like that. right? If this, this is the same 0 as that 0 right there. And this 1 we took from this guy. He became 6, and we have a 1 there. And then we say, OK, 10 is definitely greater than 6. We're cool there. But all of a sudden here, on the 3, it's still not good. 3 is smaller than 7. Still not cool. I won't be able to subtract. So let me borrow again. Now I have something to borrow from. Remember, we went from the left to right this time, instead of from the right to left. All of these are valid ways of doing it. So we, we say, let me borrow 1 from the 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9. 
And let me give that 1 to the 3 to go 13. Remember, it's not a 1. I actually added 10 to it. If I take 1 from the tens place, that's like adding 10 to the ones place. Don't want to confuse you. Hopefully you see the system here. That's the, I want you to be able to do the problems before you, you have to get the, you know, the real deep understanding of what's going on. So 13 minus 7 is 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. 6 minus 0 is 6. 636. Let's do a couple of more problems, because the subtraction, sometimes with the borrowing, it can come a little bit confusing on what to do next. So let's say 953 minus 750. Four. And maybe we'll do it in, the, in, in all of the different ways that you can actually do this type of problem. So the, the first one of the ways I talked about, like you start at the right. See, is 3 larger than 4? No, it's not. So we're going to have to make it larger than 4. So let's borrow from this 5 over here. So you'll say, so let me do that right here. So if I, if I borrow from the 5, the 5 will become a 4. And I borrowed 1. The, 3 becomes a 13. Remember, if I borrow 1 from the tens place, that's actually a 10. Right? This is 5 tens. I took 1 of the tens away, so I'm left with 4 tens. And I added that 10 to the 3, so I have 13. So this looks good. 13 minus 4, I'll be able to subtract there. But here I have a problem. 4 is less than 5. It was cool before, but now all of a sudden it's messed up. So I'm going to have to borrow again. I'm going to say, well, let me take a, one, of the, a 1 from the hundreds place, so that'll become an 8. And let me give that 100 to my tens place. 100 is 10 tens. So I'm going to add a 10 here. So it's going to become 14. Right? I took the 1 from there, and I borrowed it, or I, or I uh, rearranged that 100. I could rewrite that 100 as 1 10. And so that's what got us to that from uh, 9 to 8, or sorry, 100. I took away 100 from the 900 to get 800. And when I rewrote the 100 in the tens place, it's 10 tens. So that's why it's, I added a 10 to the 4 that I had before. I could have just scratched it out and put the 14 like that to show that I had to rewrite the 4. But now all of a sudden I'm cool. 13 minus 4. 13 minus 4 is 9. 14 minus 5 is 9. 8 minus 7 is 1. 953 minus 754 is 199. Now let's do it the left to right way. 953, let's use a different color. Minus 754. Now, this is a, this is, it'll be a little bit different than I did last time. You say, well, 9 is definitely larger than 7. Let's see, 5 is definitely larger, well, at least it's equal to 5. So if I subtract, maybe I'll get a 0 there. But then 3 is less than 4. So let me, so something, maybe I'll just have to borrow here. If I borrow here, then this is going to become a 4. Then I'm going to have to borrow from there, it'll become a 14. It'll essentially boil down to what we did on this left-hand side right here. Instead, one thing you can do is say, OK, 9 is larger than 7. That's, that's cool. Or even better, you could say 953 is larger than 754. You know that. You know that this is going to be a positive number, that this number is larger than that. Then you go shift over 1 to the left. Is 53 larger than 54? Well, no. 53 is not larger than 54. And because 53 is not larger than 54, let's borrow. Let's borrow from the hundreds place. So this will become an 8. And we have 100 to work with. So maybe we'll just throw that hundreds right here. We'll, so we'll, if we throw the hundred into the tens place, it's ten tens. So the five becomes fifteen. Right? We're going from left to right. So now we say eight is larger than seven, or, or well, eight is definitely larger than seven. Fifteen is definitely larger than five. And then here, once again, we see three is less than four. But now we can borrow from the fifteen. So if we borrow from the fifteen, the fifteen becomes a fourteen. And then the 3 becomes a 13. Because you take 1 away from the tens place, one $10 bill is equal to 10 ones. So that's why you added 10 to the 3. You got 13. And notice, we ended up really with the same thing, no matter how we did this problem. So just like that, you get 13 minus 4 is 9. 14 minus 5 is 9. 8 minus 7 is 1. Hopefully you found that pretty straightforward. These are, frankly, as hard as the borrowing problems get. The ones where you don't know have something to borrow from, or when you do borrow from it, all of a sudden it's, it's hard to, uh, you, you get a number that it'll then need to borrow from something else. And if you ever get really confused about it, you should always go back to this. You should always go back 
to this notion of regrouping. This notion of, OK, if these things are all too small, let me take a $100 bill over here. So I have $600 bills left. Let me re regroup that $100 bills into the other spaces. And in this case, we took the $100 bill, and we put 90 here, or 9 tens, 9 $10 bills, and then $10 of it right there to make everything in the numerator larger than everything in the denominator. Welcome to the presentation on level 4 subtraction. Let's get started with some problems. So the first problem I have here is 33,220 minus 399. So just like we did with, I believe that we also did borrowing in the level 3 subtraction, we have to go through all of the digits in the top number, starting with the top right digit, and make sure that they are larger than the digit below it. Because you can only subtract a, 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 a smaller number from a larger number. You can't do it the other way, until at least until we learn negative numbers. So let's go through this and check, make sure all the top numbers are larger. Well, immediately we see, no, well, this 0 is not l larger than 9. So we have to borrow to make the 0 bigger. So what we do is we borrow. Uh, one. Well, some people say we're borrowing a one. Some people will say, I mean, borrowing a one from the tens place is really like borrowing a ten. So, for for simplicity, let's just say we're borrowing a one. So, if you borrow a one from this two and this ten, this ten will become a, a zero. Sorry, will become a ten. And since we borrow that one, this two will become a one. Right? We took one away from this two and we gave it to the zero to make ten. We actually took 10 away from this 2, because this 2 is in the 10th place. I don't want to confuse you too much. Just If just the mechanics of it are, we took 1 away from the 2, and we put it in front of the 0 to make 10. Now let's keep checking. So now we have a 1 in this place. 1 is smaller than 9, so we have to borrow again. So we borrow 1 from this 2 now. So this 2 now becomes 1. And this 1 will now become an 11. So now we have a 10 is larger than a 9. 11 is larger than a 9. 1 is not larger than 3. So we have to borrow again. This, this is a good problem. It's, uh, uh, maybe I should have warmed y'all up a little bit more, but it involves a lot of borrowing. So in order to borrow, we do the same thing over again. This 1 will become an 11. And it's going to borrow from this 3, which will become a 2. I think we're done now. 10 is larger than 9. 11 is larger than 9. 11 is larger than 3. 2 is larger than nothing. 3 is larger than nothing. So now we're ready to subtract. This is the easy part. 10 minus 9 is 1. 11 minus 9 is 2. 11 minus 3 is 8. 2 minus nothing is 2. And 3 minus nothing is 3. So we get 32,821. So the important thing to the, the the only thing that makes this harder than just normal subtraction is that you have to know how to do the borrowing. And the way I do the borrowing it might be different than the way you learn in school, but I think it's easier because you do all of the borrowing at once instead of switching back and forth between borrowing and subtracting. So all we did here, we said the 0 is less than 9. Let's borrow 1. The 0 becomes a 10 because we got this 1 right here. And we got this 1 from this 2, and this 2 became a 1. I think you might see. Uh, the pattern if we do a couple more problems. So let's do a couple more. If I had, let's see, 25,633 minus 578. So same drill. We start at the top right. And we make sure that the digits on top are larger than the digit below it. Immediately, we see 3 is smaller than 8, so we have to borrow. So this 3 will become 13. And we borrow from this 3, which will now become 2. Right? We took a 1 away from this 3, became 2, and this 1 is right here. 13 is now larger than 8, but 2 is now smaller than 7, so we have to borrow again. This 2 becomes a 12, and this 6 will become a 5. 13 is larger than 8, 12 is larger than 7. 5 
is the same as 5. So you can actually do the subtraction, if, um, because 5 minus 5 is 0, if, 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 as long as the top number is not smaller than the number below it. And then obviously this 5 is larger than this 0, and this 2 is larger than this nothing here. So now we're ready to subtract. 13 minus 8 is 5. 12 minus 7 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus nothing is 5. And we have it bring down the 2. So the answer is 25,055. 20, 25, so let's do a problem now that I think will, will confuse you a little bit more because the borrowing isn't as easy. You have to actually borrow from a couple of places. Let's say I had 37,000, 0, 0, and 2 minus, let's say I had 155. So it's the same drill. So this 2 is less than 5, so we have to borrow. So this 2 will become a 12. But huh, there's a 0 here, so you can't borrow from the 0. Some people will let you borrow from the 0, but I think that just confuses things, because you can't borrow from the 0. There's nothing there. So instead of borrowing from the 0, we look to this 0. Well, there's still nothing there. So now we look, oh, there's a 7 here. So what we do is, instead of borrowing a 1 from the 0, which is hard to do, we borrow 1 from the 700, from this whole 700. And what is 700 minus 1? Right, it's 699. So that 700 becomes 699. We could cross all of this out. And now let's check our numbers again. 12 is larger than 5. 9 is larger than 5. 9 is larger than 1. 6 is larger than nothing. And 3 is larger than nothing, so we're ready to subtract. 12 minus 5 is 7. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 1 is 8. 6 minus nothing is 6. 3 minus nothing is 3. So there, we're done. The answer is 36,847. I think we could have time for one more problem. Let's say I had 3,201 3, minus, let's say it's 500. And 2. Same drill. 1 is less than 2, so we have to borrow. Turn that into an 11. But you can't borrow from a 0, so you're going to have to borrow from this entire 20. Well, what's 20 minus 1? Right. It's 19, so this becomes a 19. So let's check again. 11 is greater than 2. Check. 9 is greater than 0. Check. Uh-oh. 1 is not greater than 5. So you have to borrow again. This 1 becomes an 11. And we borrowed from this 3, which becomes a 2. 11 is greater than 2. 9 is greater than 0. 11 is greater than 5. 2 is obviously greater than nothing below it. It's so ready to subtract. 11 minus 2 is 9. 9 minus 0 is 9. 11 minus 5 is 6. And 2 minus nothing is 2. So 3,201 minus 502 is equal to 2,699. I think you're now ready to try some of the level 4 subtraction problems. You just always have to remember, do your borrowing first. Make sure all the numbers on top are, are larger than all the, or at least as large as all the numbers on the bottom. And then you can just do your subtraction like a normal subtraction problem. I hope you have some fun doing this. Talk to you later.